If you've been on social media, you've probably seen a picture of this iconic spot, and that is where we're going today on this episode of The Dive. This is Horseshoe Bend. Horseshoe Bend used to be a pretty low key place until the social media craze hit with Facebook and Instagram taking over and now photos like this are everywhere and people from all over the world are flocking to see this beautiful and magnificent canyon. This photo was taken right at sunset and the sun sets right over the back of the canyon which makes this a phenomenal place to be for the sunset if you're in Page, Arizona. What else is in Page? Antelope Canyon. So you can do both of those two amazing things in one trip. I almost missed the sunset because of my tour in Antelope Canyon. That ran long and when I got here, I only had about 10 minutes before sunset. So all the good spots were taken. This place was absolutely packed and I uh, had to squeeze through and uh, thanks to some nice photographers for loaning me some room where I could put my tiny little tripod down and set up and get a shot of the sunset. Um, it was kind of tough, but that's something that you're gonna be dealing with now when you're going to a place like Horseshoe Bend. It's gonna, there's gonna be tons of people there. So make sure you know what you're getting yourself into when you go here. I'll go more into the details of what it's like to go here in a bit. But first, let's go ahead and dive into the settings of this photo. This is a three shot bracketed HDR image. That means that this is three images put together, one underexposed, one correctly exposed, and one overexposed to capture more of the sky and the shadows and not blow out anything or have shadows that are too dark and not recoverable. All the images that I used to merge into this HDR were taken at F11 so that if you zoom in, you can see that the rocks are still sharp, even in the back as well as the rocks in the foreground, everything is sharp because we're shooting at F11. The images had an exposure of 1 60th of a second. ISO 500 probably could have been a little lower, but ISO was set from when I, went, when I was at the Antelope Canyon right before this, and when I ran over, did not have the time to readjust settings. So we were, this was taken at ISO 500. This is also at a focal length of F16, and F16 is wide enough to capture the whole entire bend as well as some of the canyon on the side. I would not recommend anything greater than 20 or 24 millimeters tops for a focal length because you won't be able to capture the whole entire river in one shot. It'll look more like this because the last time I went, I had a 27 millimeter lens and I could not capture the whole river in one shot. It was too wide. So, I suggest getting as wide of a lens as you possibly can. I think um, having a 16 to 35, which is what I had when I shot this image, is a fantastic lens uh, for this kind of composition. You can go even wider than 16. You can go down to 14 or even 11 millimeters if you want. I think it'll look fantastic. I just had a 16 to 35 on this, so the widest I can go was 16, but it still turned out fantastic for the focal length. This image was also edited using the very highly overused on social media, orange and teal LUT. Getting to Horseshoe Bend requires a little bit of a hike, 3.4 miles each way, and it's not flat terrain either. It's not a terrible hike, might take you a little bit of time, takes about 20 minutes to get to and from each way. There is a parking fee of $10 per car to go to Horseshoe Bend. And this is not affiliated with the National Park Pass or anything. So if you have the annual park pass, you won't be able to use that for Horseshoe Bend. That is something that has changed since the last time I went there. And that was in 2015, back when there were no railings or there was no parking lot or anything here. It was just a dirt road. Um, you pull off the side of the road, park in a dirt parking lot. You kind of walk along a, sort of a trail that people laid out with stones to kind of guide you, but it was very, for the most part, still relatively raw as far as nature goes. Now there's a big parking lot that's gonna charge you to park there, and is a relatively more paved path that goes from the parking lot to Horseshoe Bend, but um, again, it's still a little rocky getting there, so it, it's a bit of a hike, but it's a lot more comfortable now than it was before. But the biggest change that happened is at the cliff itself, you can't see it in this image because it's off a little on the side here and I'm 
in front of it is the railings that they've put in. Now there's a whole section of Horseshoe Bend that has railing so that people can go and observe and be safe. However, for you adventurers out there, there are parts of Horseshoe Bend on the sides of the railing area that is still raw rock that you can go up to and get shots like this where I was actually standing on the rocks near the edge. But if you guys are gonna go out onto the cliffs to take photos, be careful. It is, well, you can see it, a massive drop here. So be careful when you're taking photos out there. Sunset is definitely the most popular time to be at Horseshoe Bend because the sun again sets right behind the canyon here and it looks absolutely stunning. So if you want to go out for sunset, then make sure you get there early so you can get the spot that you want. Or if you don't get there early, then you might have to wait behind some people if you want to get a certain angle or something like that. Um, but hopefully you can find some nice people that let you squeeze in and grab your shot too. But sunset is definitely the time that you want to be here. So I would recommend if you are going to go to Horseshoe Bend, go early, especially if you're going for sunset because there's going to be so many people there. You definitely want to get a good spot if you're going to set up a tripod and you have a lot of gear and stuff, you want to get there early to nab that spot that you really, really want. If you do want to take photos of Horseshoe Bend and yourself with little to no people in it, you're gonna to wanna to go during the day, not at sunset, because at sunset, it gets crowded. A lot of people show up to go watch the beautiful sunset. So definitely go early in the day if you want pictures of yourself at the canyon. But if you want the sunset, then you're gonna to have to deal with the crowds. So a lot of people don't like HDR photography because it's not as pure. However, I like it in situations like this to really bring out the dynamic range and to be able to capture like the shadows here, but also the bright sun here without blowing out the sun or getting shadows that are too dark and you can't get any details out of. But even if you're not doing HDR photography, you're just taking standard photos, it's a gorgeous place that you, you'll be able to get amazing photos from. Just be careful and learn to deal with the crowds. That brings us to the end of another deep dive and thank you guys for watching. This is Horseshoe Bend. If you guys wanna see more photos like this, go ahead and check out my Instagram, link in the description below. And if you go check that out, if you see other photos that you wanna see, videos like this, for, let me know, put any questions or comments that you have in the comment section below, and I will see you guys in the next one.